Good morning. Welcome to the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass on this Monday of the third week in Lent. This morning's Mass intention is for Marianne Gia Cologne, requested by Victor and Joanne D'Anton. We begin with the entrance antiphon. My soul is longing and yearning for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out to the living God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My friends, as we gather to celebrate these mysteries of our faith, let us turn to our Father, mindful of our sin, as we call upon his mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. May your unfailing compassion, O Lord, cleanse and protect your church. And since without you she cannot stand secure, may she be always governed by your grace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. Naaman, the army commander of the king of Aram, was highly esteemed and respected by his master. For through the, him the Lord had brought victory to Aram. But valiant as he was, the man was a leper. Now the Aramenians had captured in a raid on the land of Israel a little girl who became the servant of Naaman's wife. If only my master would present himself to the prophet in Samaria, she said to her mistress, he would cure him of his leprosy. Naaman went and told this to his Lord, just what the slave girl from the land of Israel had said. Go, said the king of Aram, I will send along a letter to the king of Israel so Naaman set out, taking along 10 silver talents, 6,000 gold pieces, and 10 festal garments. To the king of Israel, he brought the letter which read, with this letter, I am sending my servant Naaman to you, that you may cure him of his leprosy. When he read the letter, the king of Israel tore his garments and exclaimed, Am I a god with power over life and death, that this man should send someone to me to be cured of leprosy? Take note, you can see he is only looking for a quarrel with me. When Elijah, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his garments, he sent word to the king, Why have you torn your garments? Let him come to me and find out that there is a prophet in Israel. Naaman came with his horses and chariots and stopped at the door of Elijah's house. The prophet sent him a message. Go and wash seven times in the Jordan, and your flesh will heal, and you will be clean. But Naaman went away angry, saying, I thought that he would surely come out and stand there to invoke the Lord, his God, and would move his hand over the spot and thus cure the leprosy. 
Are not the rivers of Damascus, the Abana, and the Parfor better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be cleansed? With this he turned about in anger and left. But his servants came up and reasoned with him. My father, they said, if the prophet had told you to do something extraordinary, would you not have done it? All the more now, since he said to you, wash and be clean, should you do as he said. So Naaman went down and plunged into the Jordan seven times at the word of the man of God. <clears throat> His flesh became again like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. He returned with his whole retinue to the man of God. On his arrival, he stood before him and said, Now I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. The word of the Lord. A thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? A thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? As the hind longs for the running waters, so my soul longs for you, O God. A thirst is my soul for the living God. And shall I go and behold the face of God? A thirst is my soul for God, the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? A thirst is my soul for the living God. Send forth your light and your fidelity. They shall lead me on and bring me to your holy mountain, to your dwelling place. This is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? Then will I go into the altar of God, the God of my gladness and joy. Then will I give you thanks upon the harp, O oh God, my God, thirst is my soul. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to the people in the synagogue at Nazareth, Amen, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own native place. Indeed, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah when the sky was closed for three and a half years and a severe famine spread over the entire land. It was to none of these that Elijah was sent, but only to a widow in Zarephath in the land of Sidon. Again, there were many lepers in Israel during the time of Elisha the prophet, yet not one of them was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. When the people in the synagogue heard this, they were all filled with fury. They rose up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town had been built to hurl him down headlong. But he passed through the midst of them and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. As I mentioned last week, it seems that sometimes Jesus, especially with the readings that we have during this time of the liturgical season, as we find ourselves here in Lent, that Jesus is starting to um, stir the pot up a little bit, where we see him encountering those who did not have his best interest at heart. and. Um, 
doing and saying things that were running contrary to the way things were supposed to be. Here is one of those cases. Who does Jesus reference? Uh, this is right after he had said, you know, um, when he read from the, the scroll of Isaiah and said that the Spirit of the Lord was upon him to announce the, the message of freedom and healing and everything, and that in their hearing and in his proclamation that it was being fulfilled. So in other words, he got them pretty wound up about himself being the Messiah. He didn't come out and say, I am the Messiah, but there he was. Where we pick up this uh, passage today is right there in that synagogue in Nazareth. The people were upset with him because of what he had said. And then instead of appeasing them and trying to make it so it's, you know, it smooths out. You know how we do that a lot of times. We don't want to deal with confrontation. So we will we'll swallow or we'll make it nice so that we can just move on. Jesus says no. And then he gives them two examples of God intervening in the lives of people, but he didn't use any examples that had to do with Israelites. He told them about Naaman the Syrian, who was not an Israelite, who was a Gentile. He talked about the widow of Zarephath, who was not an Israelite, was a, a Gentile. And yet it was God reaching out to them so what's that saying to them? You can be part of God's plan, but you're going to have to allow yourself to change a little bit. And God's message, the message that Jesus was bringing to the people, was one that would not be limited, constricted, or, or segregated from the world. But it would be a message that would go out to all to all who would believe, to all who would come to believe, to all who would be able to see with an open mind and an open heart. Today, his word comes to us in much the same way. God's way is offered to all. And for you and me, I think what we can take from this today is that our faith, for it to remain alive and dynamic is that we make a commitment every day to believe, that we make in our prayer a renewed sense of our belief, always listening, always paying attention, or maybe studying too to see where God's word challenges where we are. Remember what we say about God's word, it's living and active. So you might have a really old Bible that you read from, but the word of God that's in there is alive and no dust gathers on it because the message is there for each of us. So let's continue to have open mind, open heart to receive God's word in our own. Amen. We pray for the church that the Lord continue to lead us to a deeper conversion and faith. We pray to the Lord. For the salvation of the world and an end to war and violence among nations, we pray to the Lord. For all those who experience prejudice and discrimination, may the Lord grant them justice and healing, we pray to the Lord. For those who are being called by God to serve in the church, that they have the courage and grace to say yes, we pray to the Lord. For all who are in the final steps of the journey to the Easter sacraments, may the Spirit enlighten their minds and purify their hearts, we pray to the Lord. For all who have died, 
May the Lord grant them eternal joy. We pray to the Lord. And for all of those prayers that we bring with us here today, We pray to the Lord. O loving and merciful God, hear the prayers we bring before you with sincere and trusting hearts and answer them in accordance with your holy will. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <clears throat> May what we offer you, O Lord, in token of our service, be transformed by you into the sacrament of our salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. So now we glorify you with countless angels as with one voice of praise we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, O Lord, the bread of life <clears throat> and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. <clears throat> Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. As brothers and sisters of our Lord Jesus, we have the courage to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> o Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other now a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. Our communion antiphon, O oh, praise the Lord, all you nations, for his merciful love towards us is great.
of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Make communion in this your sacrament, we pray, O Lord. Bring with it purification and the unity that is your gift through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. St. Michael the Archangel. Defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The prayer to Saint Joseph. Hail, guardian of the Redeemer, spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary. In you, Mary placed her trust. With you, Christ became man. Blessed Joseph, to us too, show yourself a father and guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us gracie, mercy, and courage, and defend us from every evil. Amen. Have a good day. <laughs>